Let's get started with lecture 29. Uh, in this lecture, we'll talk about the ray model of light. And we start talking about um, reflection and refraction uh, in, the, in the context of, of this model. So it's a model that's quite appropriate uh, when you're dealing with relatively large objects of order centimeters and, and larger. Um, and, the, and here we don't really need to worry about the interference fringes that, that we talked, talked about before. So we discussed the limit where, where this model is, is appropriate uh, in, in the previous chapter. So we're starting with chapter uh, 34 and we'll talk about um, the ray model first. So the idea is that you can imagine these rays characterizing the direction that the energy of light travels. So let's say if you have a point source, if we have a point source, as we had before, right? So previously we had this picture of the point source kind of emitting these waves and there are these wave fronts. Let's say there are some, so let's say the source is here. Um, there are these crests and some troughs. So I, I just draw the crests. They're separated by, by a wavelength. Right, so that's, that's the picture we're used to when we were thinking about wave optics. And of course, you know, these, these wave fronts are moving away, right, in the radial direction. So if you think about what direction the energy is being transferred, uh, it's in the direction of these lines that you can draw normal or per perpendicular to, to all the wave fronts, right? So light is emitted from the source and is moving in these directions. And so there are these rays one can imagine that that are emitted and move in all directions from that that point uh, point source of light. And if you have, let's say, a light beam, right, a beam of light, so where the energy basically moves in one direction. So that's like if you're really far away from the source, that's what you would experience. And basically you have these parallel wave fronts, right? And they just move in that direction. Well, again, the lines perpendicular to the wave fronts um, give us the rays. So if you have a laser, for example, it's a bundle of parallel rays. And then, you know, any objects um, that we see well, light is being emitted, right, from all the points on this object. I mean, it may be itself a source of light. I don't know, a flashlight or, or the computer screen or something like that. Or if it's not, uh, basically there's light in the environment. So uh, when light gets reflected off of the surface of any object, all the points on that object are sending out these rays. So if you think about an object in the ray model of light, I don't know, let's say we imagine a tree, every point on it serves as some source that's sending rays in all directions. And the idea is that the rays are straight lines um, in a uniform, let's say, environment. Unif in an, let's say, in a medium with uniform index of refraction. So if the speed of propagation doesn't change, we basically get these uniform, these straight lines. And as we'll 
we'll talk later in this lecture, uh, there is a law of refraction which says the direction of these rays will change as you enter a medium where the speed is different. And if the speed is changing, for example, continuously, then you can get curved rays. All right. So let's go to to the slides here and sli start with, with a preview um, of the of the material we'll be, we'll be talking about. So yeah, so the first thing is just understanding the ray model of light. It's a very simple, as I just described. Um, we imagine light being emitted from all points of, of an object along these, these straight lines. So objects are sources of light rays. And then uh, how we see is that, well, the rays kind of enter our eye, right? And an image is formed on the retina, and then it's converted to some signals sent to the brain, etc. Uh, things like mirrors and lenses can, can create images. It's you know, they change the direction of rays. They do something to the rays, and it appears the rays are coming from a different place. Uh, so, so they can create images, and these images can be either real images, where physically, like the the, the light rays that reach our eye, um, converge at that point, or um, or there could be virtual images where um, where that where there is no physical real place where uh, these these light rays converge. It appears they're coming from somewhere. So we'll we'll talk a lot about this uh, in this chapter. So we have two main laws that are basically just a simple consequence of of the fact that uh, the wavelength is a function of the index of refraction so the frequency doesn't change it's the property of the source and then the wavelength changes and because the wavelength uh, in in one medium is the same we have a law of reflection, re reflection, which means the, the incident angle is the same as the reflected angle. And then there is also a law of refraction, which talks about how the, the direction of, of a ray changes as it enters a medium with a different index of refraction. So there is a law called Snell's law, which we will talk about discusses you know how how these angles are related to to the indices of, of refraction and then we'll talk about lenses so how they form images what are when when we have virtual images where we have real images um, so we we do this thing called ray tracing which basically you, you consider all the rays that are emitted from an object and trace them and figure out their fate as they go through a lens and see how they form an image and what is the thing that we would see. We also apply similar methods to curved mirrors. All right, so that's, that's a preview of, of what we'll discuss in this chapter. Um, ray optics is also known as geometric optics. Wave optics is, is known as physical optics. So here we talk less about the physics. It's a simple mathematical model that lets us use um, simple geometry uh, to solve various problems. All right. Um, so again, reviewing what, what we talked about. So we can imagine these rays giving us really the direction of travel. Um, so if you're thinking about a point source, they they move in all directions. And if you think about a beam of light, they're all moving uh, in parallel in some direction. 
So objects are either self-luminous or uh, or they're reflective. Most objects we see them because they reflect light, and and those are the two important scenarios that we talked about: a parallel bundle and a point source. So we can think about a ray diagram. Basically, from different points of an object, you can draw these rays going in all directions. OK. So let's uh, start talking about the first simple application of ray optics. So I think called the camera obscura, uh, which was a popular form of entertainment in ancient Rome. It's basically a dark room. Uh, with no windows and, or anything. And then with a very small hole or, or an aperture in one of the walls. And usually there's a nice view on the other side. So, so when people go inside this room, uh, they can see an image on the opposite wall over here. And it's an image of what's, out, what's outside, but it's inverted. And that's a simple consequence of ray optics. And suppose that that back wall is like a nice screen. It's kind of white, so you can't see a good image um, on the wall. Well, let's figure out what that image looks like. Well, let's go to the, to the notes here. Um, so first application. image from an aperture. So a really small hole in some barrier and there's some screen here. So let's say I have this object. Okay, so from this point, you know, there's gonna be rays in all directions, right? And, well, most of these rays hit the barrier that they don't move. And there's going to be just a couple of rays that go through this, this aperture. And we're in the limit where, you know, uh, the wavelength is not comparable to the size of the aperture. So we're not going to see diffraction and fringes. So basically there's going to be, if, the, if we're just seeing that bright middle kind of, uh, fringe and we can treat the light as just moving uh, moving through this without spreading out so so of all so from this one point of all the rays that are emitted and if the object is a tree or something they're emitted because light from other sources is getting reflected from their surface there's just the rays that go through this aperture that thread that can pass the barrier and they go and end up go on a straight line end up on this this screen here and similarly from the bottom let's say the ray that can reach the screen is the ray that goes through the aperture so that goes over here so something like this. So we're going to see an image formed like that on, on the screen back there. It's inverted, right? Just as a result of this simple geometry. So this, if this is above the aperture, this line connecting the, this point to the aperture is moving downward and then it keeps going down. So it flips the image and then if you're inside that dark room you would see the the outside world kind of upside down uh, so, yeah and then there is also like the size of the image is different right from the actual size of the object so if let's say let's see what they're called Yeah, D naught and D one and H naught and H one. So let's say this is 
denotes the distance between the, the actual object to, to the aperture. And then let's say D1 is the distance from the aperture to the, to the, um, to the screen. Then um, let's say this is H naught, this is H1. So basically the idea is that these triangles, right, um, they're, they're similar triangles. If this angle is theta, this is theta, they're the same angle. If this angle is alpha, this is alpha, right? It's one line and what angle it makes with, with vertical lines is, is the same. Similarly, if this is beta, that's beta. So those are two triangles that are similar. And then this is a line kind of perpendicular from this vertex to this side. This is a line from this vertex to that side. So, so one can use the similarity of the triangles. This is just the rescaled uh, triangle. And then we can write H1 over D1, which is the ratio of this side. Um, to be H naught over D naught. Okay. So, so then, for example, if something is unknown, we, for example, let's say the, we can predict the size of the image, right, on, on the screen. So D1 from here, or H1 rather, the size of the image becomes H naught times D one over D naught. So yeah, so we form this image that's inverted and depending on where the object is, what is the distance to the, to the aperture, it can be bigger or smaller. All right, uh, so let's do a quick question. So pause the video, try to figure out the answer. All right, uh, I hope you managed to find the correct answer here. So we have a light bulb, there's a small hole in a in a dark screen and we want to see what's the image that forms on the other side on the viewing screen well yeah it must be an inverted image right so the light the rays from the top go through the the aperture and appear at the bottom here and the, the rays from the bottom of the light bulb go through the aperture and appear at the top so yeah b is the the correct answer all right, here's another question. So again, pause the video, try to figure out the answer. All right, so we have two point sources of light and they illuminate a narrow vertical aperture in, in, a, in a dark screen. What do we see on the viewing screen? So, so yeah, so there are rays going away from the two sources right in all directions and we want to see what ray what reaches what rays reach the, the viewing screen we're forgetting about all all diffraction right so if a ray just goes through the that slit it will hit the viewing screen and make make it bright otherwise it's it's absorbed by the dark screen or or reflected all right, so so let's think a little bit about this. Uh, this is example. This is, yeah. Quick check thirty four two. So let's look at it from the top. Right. If I look at it from the top, what do I see? I see this this aperture. So it's like a rectangular opening that kind of goes into the the page for some distance. And there are, let's say, some cross sections. There is this point, and there's that point. So these are the two sources. Okay. So one and two. And that's the viewing screen. 
So if you look in this plane, right, of course the, the rays kind of can be in this plane that contains the, the source, right? And this one will go and hit screen somewhere here. This one will go through the aperture, hit the screen somewhere here. Now that's, you know, for one cross section, right? So if you have, let's say, another cross section, let me see if I can draw this better. Um, yeah, let's focus on one of these sources. So source one for ex or source two, for example. Um, and let's see, so if I put, Imagine in this cross section, I can imagine this is some x-axis, this is a y-axis, and the slit is in is along the the z-axis, right? So it's going to be something like this. Um, right? If you imagine a three-dimensional picture, so that's our our slit here. And let's say the source is on the xy plane, so it's at source two is at some negative x and negative y, so it's going to be somewhere over here, right? So let's say that's our source two, and then the, the screen is perpendicular to the x-axis, so it's going to be. Something like that. That's our screen here. Right, perpendicular to the x axis, so it's going to be parallel to y and z, like that. So, what we drew here is like in this cross section, well, this ray goes through the slit and hits the hits the screen at some positive y, so hits it on on the xy plane hits it over here right now if you know you go through a different point so you can imagine like it's not in the plane it's kind of there's another ray that's lifted from the xy plane and it's going through the slit at some positive value of z well it, it keeps going right and it will hit the screen at some positive value of z at some higher point so that means we should be getting um, two kind of narrow vertical lines, right? So basically the points that get illuminated are points like this, depending on where through the slit this goes. Yeah, some, some image like that gets formed for one of the sources. So here, this point that we see, parallel to the slit it will come out of the plane and it's, it's going to be some narrow line of light similarly for source one so going back to so our problem yeah it seems in this limit we should be seeing c right and the images should be a little bit kind of bigger right than than the slit depending on on the distance between the sources and the screens for example if the if the sources are like the, the same distance from the screen as the distance between this dark screen to the to the viewing screen, the, the image should be twice as big. All right, so C is, is the correct answer in this case. So we talked about what happens to, to, to rays as they go through apertures um, now now we can talk about reflection from a flat smooth surface like a mirror or a polished piece of metal all right so so the idea is is quite simple right the idea is that the the incident angle is the same 
as a reflected angle, and that's called the law of reflection. So let's try to make sense of this. It's simply a consequence of the speed of propagation being the same. So imagine you shine light, you know, in some direction, right, on your on your mirror. So so if the rays are coming this way, that means your wave fronts are perpendicular to the wave to the to the rays. And the distance between wave fronts is lambda, the wavelength. So as the waves get reflected, they have to propagate in the same medium, right? So um, so then they can't be at a different angle, right? So the wave fronts must form the same angle so they have the same distance, right? So if you think about just two wave fronts, let's say this wave front hits here. Um, sorry. Yeah, this wave front hits here, corresponding to a ray like that. And then some wave front gets now originated that's being reflected going that way. And then the next one hits here, right? And it originates a wave front going this way. Uh, if the distances so between the incident ones is lambda, the distances between the reflected ones must be lambda. And the reflected ones, we assume, are parallel. So, therefore, these angles must be the same, right? Uh, the wave fronts form with the, with the surface must be the same. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to have the same distance, right? So, suppose I, I draw these two incident ones like that. And let's say that's some angle alpha. Well, if, let's say, the, the reflected ones go that way with some different angle beta, then this distance, if you draw a parallel, a perpendicular line to both of them, this is not going to be the same. The only way you can get the same distance is that these angles are the same. And that implies that the incident angle, so if you now forget about the weight fronts, it's kind of confusing, and just think about the, the mirror, there is a vertical line, there is a ray at some theta incident. So these are now the rays hitting that surface. It must get reflected with the same angle on the other side. So that's theta. Um, R for reflected. Okay, so that's a simple law to, to state and it just governs how mirrors behave, how they form images. So using this very simple law, we can understand flat mirrors and we can understand uh, curved mirrors as well. Yeah, so the law basically says the incident angle is the same as the reflected angle. Okay, so let's now think about images that, that are formed. So this is an example. Let's uh, think about this using an example. So we have a dressing mirror on a closet door that's 150 meters tall. The bottom is half a meter above the, the floor. And a light bulb hangs one meter from the closet door. Okay. And it's uh, 2.5 meters above the floor. So how long is the streak of reflected light across the floor? 
So that's the geometry, right? We have this mirror. It's it's 1.5 meters high. It's a uh, half a meter from the floor. And the light bulb is 2.5 meters from the floor. So half a meter plus 1.5 is two. So it's gonna be uh, on this horizontal line that's, um, that's half a meter above the top of the mirror, right? And it's one meter away from the mirror. So the light bulb is sending rays in all directions and the rays kind of hit the mirror right with some angle get reflected with the same angle so the region on the floor where we have light reflected from the mirror is going to be this range here right so we can think about the ray um, reaching the top of the mirror it hits the mirror with some angle theta one, right? And it gets reflected with the same angle theta one. So with the horizontal line that's perpendicular to the mirror, these two rays form the same angle. Similarly, the, the ray reaching the bottom of the mirror um, does the same thing. So if, if it forms an angle theta two, it gets reflected with an angle theta two. So that's tracing these, these rays here. And then if you have any ray in between, right? Remember the rays are moving in all direction. So it goes, let's say somewhere here, you look at this angle, go with the same angle. It's gonna land somewhere between these two points, right? And if you have a ray outside, well, it doesn't reach the mirror, so it never gets reflected from the mirror. So now the whole thing reduces to, to a geometry problem, right? So we just need to determine uh, theta one and theta two, and then determine these different length. L1, let's say the distance from this point to, to the wall, containing the mirror and L2, the distance from this point to the, to the wall. All right, so how do we do this geometry? Well, we should look at a bunch of triangles, right? So I can have, let's say, one triangle here at the top, if you think about this one where you have this angle theta two, here you have one meter, here you have half a meter. And then, sorry, this is theta one. And then there is this triangle that has the big triangle, has L1, theta one here, right? If this is theta one, right, with the horizontal, then this is theta one. And from here to here, I have half plus one and a half, right? So that's two meters. So these are similar triangles, these two. This and this. The right triangles, they have one angle in common, so I can write L1 over one is two over 0.5, so L1 becomes four meters. Similarly, uh, let me clean up a little bit. Similarly, you can now consider the triangle with, uh, with angle theta two, like this one. So if I consider the ray reaching the bottom of the mirror, again, on this side, I have one meter. On this side, I have 0.5 plus one and a half, so I have two meters. 
here I have theta 2, right? And then when it gets reflected, this little triangle here again has theta 2, right? This ang these angles are all theta 2. So it's going to be L2.5, this is theta 2. Again, these are similar triangles. So now, oops, now L2 over 1 is 0.5 over 2. So L2 is uh, 0.25. Okay. Okay, so the book solves it in a different way, finds theta as the arc tangent, uh, and then, then again now, divide by that tangent and uh, find the length. So yeah, but it's just a consequence of those triangles being similar. So that's four, this is 0.25, as we calculated, their difference is 3.75 meters. Okay, so let's talk about images in flat mirrors. So images So let's say we have a mirror and we have a point P. So let's say um, point source of light. So first we try to understand what we see if we have just one point point source and then we'll we'll extend what we discover to to more extended objects. Let me draw a better straight line here. Okay, so, so imagine you're, you're somewhere, I don't know, let's say your eye is somewhere over here on this side of the mirror, right? That's, that's the front of the mirror. So what do we see? Well, there are different rays that are emitted from this point source, right? So one goes over here, one goes over here. These are all the different rays emitted from this point source of light that reach the mirror. Okay. What happens to them? Well, this if this is kind of straight in, in the front, it just comes back. So let me draw them in blue. All right, this just comes back. Let me draw the vertical lines like this so we can just trace the angles. Then the reflected ray from this one kind of looks like that. The reflected ray from this one, if it has the same angle here, so it's a little bit more, more extended like that. This forms a bigger angle kind of like this. Okay. So that's what's happening. And then, you know, of all these rays, the one that reach our eye, we see them, let's say that's a bigger eye. So there's gonna be some, some of these reflected rays that reach our eye, depending on how big your eye is and where it is. Uh, and then you would see something. So now the trick is to kind of trace these back, see where they're coming from. So let's call this distance S from the, the source of the mirror, okay? So now, clearly this is coming this ray. It's as if, you know, it's coming straight from, from behind the mirror. Now, if I trace this back, well, what do I see? I mean, if this angle is theta, right? Um, 
if this angle here is theta, then the loss is this is theta. So that means this is theta here. Now it means this is theta. So this and also this is theta, right? It's the angle of this line with the horizontal. It's also the angle of this line with the horizontal. So I'm drawing multiple horizontal lines, but it's just one line and they, they have the same angle. So that means from here to here, if that's a distance S prime, it's equal to S, right? These two triangles have one common side, they're right triangles, they have the same angles. So all their sides must be equal. And that's kind of independent of theta, right? So that means there is a point right behind the mirror, right? The same distance from the mirror. And then all these rays that are reflected, it's as if they're, they're, they originate from that point. If you trace them back, they all reach this point. So that point is the virtual image of this point P. Right, so what's happening physically is, yeah, you have all these rays that hit the mirror, they get reflected according to this reflection law, which means the incident angle is the same as the, the reflection angle. But that means from the point of view of this observer somewhere, if you just see these reflected rays, it's as if they're coming from a point behind the mirror and a point that's that you can construct by kind of drawing the line perpendicular to the mirror, seeing what distance it is, so distance s, and continuing that perpendicular line the same distance s. And then that's the image. So from the point of view of the observer, it's like all these rays are coming from that point behind the mirror. And of course, this is very, very intuitive from everyday experience. Like whenever you look at, at a mirror, it looks like everything is kind of behind it. And if they're, they're closer to the mirror, uh, they seem closer to you, right? If you have something really far from you, um, then far behind you, right? It looks there a longer distance, they're deeper inside the mirror. Okay, so now if I have some extended object, instead of, let's say, a point P, let's say I have a tree. Right, so that's the mirror here. Well, again, from this point, uh, it's all the rays that are emitted from this point, reflected from the mirror, it appears they're coming from the image of that point. For this point, the image is over here. For this point, the, the image is over here. For this point, the image is over here. This point, the image is over there. So... So, yeah. Um, so let's say one, two, three, four, five. It's going to be one, two, three, uh, five, four. So we see an object of of the same shape and size uh, and the same distance it is in front of the mirror it's as if it's placed like the same distance behind the mirror okay so that's that's a better picture right we have this object and every point of it you know has an image that's the same distance 
These are some rays that are shown. And, and we also see like what forms on the retina and how, how, how we see it if our eye is, is there. Okay, so here's a, a quick check. Think about this and, uh, and we'll come back and look at the solution. All right, so, so there's a pencil. You're looking at its image in the mirror. Um, so what do you see in the mirror? If the top half of the mirror is covered with a piece of dark paper, it's a good conceptual question. Uh, what would we see? So let's go back to, to the notes here. Um, so it's like, it's the question has to do with the size of the mirror, right? So you have this big mirror here and you have this pencil somewhere over here. Okay. Now, so the image, the virtual image is over here. So what, what happens to that virtual image? Well, let's think about this point, for example. So how is that, let's say, how is the image of this point formed here, right? So you have light coming from this point in all different directions. getting reflected and all those reflection reflected rays they they originate from this point this is pretty much vertical it seems yeah sorry about that okay so now if you cover Half of the mirror, if it's not there, well, you block these rays, but there are all these rays, right, uh, that are getting reflected from the bottom half of the mirror. So, so it's just maybe the brightness goes down, but we're not going to lose any of those points because you made... Um, You, you made the mirror smaller. Yeah, so. So that's, that's basically the answer. So because, you know, there's no let's say from this point, there's no straight line going through the mirror reaching the image, right? You don't have that, that perpendicular ray. But again, all the rays that do reach the mirror, they come from the image, right? So you don't need to have all those rays uh, to, to have the image. Now, of course, just because the image exists, right? So you have a mirror of any side and there's some object in front of it, there's going to be a ray you can draw from any point of the object to the mirror and it gets reflected. So the image is, is going to be there. But I mean, depending on where your eye is, where you're standing, of course, you may not see the image of everything, right? So we have to scrutinize this a little bit more and see if there is a path that goes through the mirror from the image that can reach our eye. So for example, if um, the eye, so now the eye is come somewhere at the bottom here. So 
we don't have an issue, right? That image forms and if you can, as long as you can draw a line from the, the image of any point to the eye so that it goes through the mirror, there is going to be a ray that's reflected from the mirror and can reach the eye. But suppose for the sake of the argument that I have my eye here, right? Let's say I'm, this is the eye. Okay. So would I see the image of this point? Well, no, because in order for me to see, well, let's say that's the eye. So in this region, let's say I want to see this point. Yeah, so there should be some rays from the image reaching the eye, but there's no way for that. So the position of the eye is also important. So yeah. So kind of the lesson is, yeah, we always form an image. You can put the viewer somewhere to see that image, no matter how, how small the mirror is. So really there doesn't have to be a path that goes through the mirror from the object to its image, right? That's, that's the lesson here. There's, oops, here's, there's no direct path from let's say this point to its image, but there are rays that reach the mirror and they get reflected and that it's like they're, they're coming from the image. So that's not an issue. But in order for the viewer to see that image, there must be a path from the image, right, to the eye that goes through the mirror. So if, you, if the, the eye is here, you would see an image of here. So if you have, let's say, a longer pencil that goes all the way to here, then you could see some part of, of that pencil, for example. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a good place to stop. Uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next lecture.